Hey everyone, Sky here to discuss Pet Cemetery, starring De Dale Midkiff, Denise Crosby, Fred Gwynn, Brad Greenquist, Blaze Berthall, and Miko Hughes, and directed by Mary Lambert. Now, I'm a newbie to this movie and the whole series. And let me tell you something, it's not this movie that I reviewed last year or two years ago. There will be a chapter two of that movie in this um, this September, and I'm looking forward to that more than I'm looking forward to reviewing any Pet Cemetery. But let for the hell with it. Let's get into this movie. We open the movie of what this title is, which is a cemetery for pets, but spelled wrong, and we, the audience, see a bunch of pets that died, and that I thought was a nice spooky way to open the movie up. And that may be the only com compliment I'll give this movie. Maybe there's more later on, but... We meet the Creed family. Lewis, played by Dale Midkiff. Rachel, played by Denise Crosby. Ellie, played by Blaze Birdall. And Gage, played by Miko Hughes. Now, the only actor in that I've seen in other things is Miko Hughes, who was in these two movies that I've seen from him. But the other actors, I've not seen on either or anything that much. But the acting by all of them are so bad. Including the one, the other two whom I'll either bring up real soon or a little later. But, yeah, the acting here is horrendous. They even have a cat named Church, as in Winston Churchill. What is, which is what Lewis will say later in the beginning... Gage runs into the street where the truck drivers drive really fucking fast like you will not believe. I mean, to the point when the truckers don't pay attention, they're too distracted by their musical, their music at, they're driving. Then a neighbor of theirs, Judd Crandall, played by Fred Gwynn, saves Gage as the Creeds just move into their new house and... Judd, as a character, has an arc that's interesting, but if I don't like these characters, he's the least unlikable. And that's either good or bad. And I'd say a bit above for the good he has an arc, which will get explained later in the film, and he's old and wise. The bad is more the acting by Fred Gwynn does need to improve as far as, as saying the lines goes. He takes the creeds to the pathway to a pet cemetery, which is a terrible place to bury your pets. Because how could you bury your pet in an unfamiliar place? And also, Ellie asks a lot of questions about death, which is inappropriate. Which is an inappropriate conversation, and she asks about it a hell of a lot, and that bothers me so badly. On Lewis's first day as a doctor at a school, a man named Victor Pascal, played by Brad Greenquist, who is was in a couple of movies I've seen from him called But I don't remember him in both films, but this character he plays dies and becomes a ghost to Lewis and Rachel I have at times throughout the movie. And he's probably the worst thing about this movie. I honestly thought that he was a mind, he was mind fucking with Lewis, because he'll lead Lewis into a resurrection, or two resurrections. What am I, what am I saying? Which I'll get to later in the film, which is a bad way to lead the, into the plot of this movie. Judd tells Lewis he has a dead cat in his lawn, not not Lewis's lawn, but Judd's lawn, <coughs> and turns out to be Church. And they take Church to a different cemetery where he'll resurrect. And how did the cat die? Probably for the best to make the answer not not to answer that question as a mystery. Because you can use your imagination instead of being shown. So I'll give that another compliment. And I like the fact that we can use our imagination on how the cat died. It'll get ruined later in the film. 
because he stabs it with a needle in its ass. Oh my god, I hate that scene. While Lewis is home alone on Thanksgiving, he sees Church resurrected and scares the shit out of him, which the jump scare was pretty cheap, and he's not on the same cat as he was before he died. So Lewis goes to Judd to find out how he had a dog named Spot who was resurrected before this movie ever begins. And I like that scene because we learn a bit about Judd as a young boy. The housemaid Missy, who was seen earlier in the movie, commits suicide. And again, Ellie is annoying the hell out of me. Because another eight, because at her age, she should only believe in heaven. She and Lewis have again in another inappropriate conversation, and Rachel tells Lewis one on one about her sister acting like a demon, and then and the that flashback I really fucking hating hate it because Stephen King I don't believe he has, has demons in his stories, but please comment on the bottom of the of the screen where it's below the titles where he might have wrote characters about demons. I think he knows better than that with the amount of movies that has demons in it. Gage flies a kite, and the Creeds plus Judd try to stop Gage from going to the road. A truck suddenly appears and hits Gage while the trucker is rocking out in his music. And that's when I was talking about earlier. Rachel's father comes to the funeral acting like a total asshole in the middle of the church and fights Lewis and I was wishing he was dead I mean really from that scene on but nope he's alive for the rest of the movie Rachel and Ellie go back to Chicago with the grandparents and Lewis goes to the cemetery to get Gage out of the casket and Lewis goes incredibly fucking crazy and buries Gage into the same place church gets resurrected and Gage is alive playing games while Rachel is on the way to um, what she believes that gate that Lewis is gonna do with the living of and remember how I said if they die they never stay the same well that's what's happening here engage stabs Judd in the heel of the fact of the foot and cuts him in the mouth and Rachel comes home and to see Gage is alive and kills her. And Lewis figures out how to put Church and Gage down for good with a needle. God, I hate that scene. That will put him to sleep for good and ever. And Rachel is turned back alive and stabs Lewis. This entire ending is fucked in a, in a big what the fuck moment. Because it's very unsatisfying for me. Now it's time for the rating. I'll give this movie a 4.1 out of 10. There's a few things I do like and some bad things I don't like. The characters are absolutely ludicrous. The plot was bad. And let's hope it's like it will be a better remake and the ending is unsatisfying. This movie is so unfulfilling. So I would like to thank you guys for joining me. And next week I will be back for Pet Cemetery 2. And until next time... Sometimes dead is better.